Well, before I even begin talking about what I'm going to talk about, I haven't decided if I'm going to put up um, two sh very short videos that involve uh, shortwave radio. And the reason for that is because I would be the one guy that I would have a copyright problem with one of the stations. You see them all over YouTube and it doesn't seem like anyone has any but then you see a lot of stuff all over YouTube and I'm sure a lot of it is copyright protected. I'm not sure if anything that I would put up would violate copyright but that's always a concern of mine. Anyway, I found an article on Counterpunch that pretty much describes mm, generally what the conclusion I've come to about the state of things, <laughs> the state of the union, the state of um, politics such as it is in the United States of America and to some degree the world, or to a great degree really, that means the world, because the United States plays such a large role in the world. And it was an article in Counterpunch, and I'll try to remember to put the link when I put this video up down below. And um, basically it says that uh, the so-called resistance, as they're calling themselves, and the Trump administration are kind of like doubles or doppelgangers of, them, of each other. You know, and that um, if you really think about it, the people who were voting for Trump, the ones who uh, voted against the past 40 years of neoliberal policy, they're the resistance in some ways. Although, in some ways, the people inside the Trump administration are the establishment as well. And we can see that, and I think he mentions that in the article. He sums it up better than I can, but the point being that um, these people on this, the main point I got, the main takeaway from it, for me, and, and he made lots of good points, but this is the main thing I got out of it, is these people don't might not even realize it, the people who are wearing the pink hats and are protesting on the street and going to the Women's March, which seems like very... Um, timely and important and legitimate march but that's because they couldn't call it a march for neoliberalism you see because the people who are really behind the the scenes who are really and the media that's another thing he points out if if it was for real it wouldn't be televised the revolution will not be televised this is on cnn and who knows everywhere else it seems like I remember when we protested the war in Afghanistan. We could, you know, you could get hardly get two TV cameras there in in Washington D.C. You know, you could hardly get any coverage. The Iraq War, because it was so deeply unpopular over time, you got some coverage. It was sort of like coverage that was <laughs> not <laughs> unfair to say the least. But in this case, right away, cameras everywhere, and there, and it's the the resistance. They're the resistance. But really what they are, they're the old guard. They're the establishment. The person, I forget his name, the author, who writes this article in the Counterpunch, he makes this case better than myself. So again, I'll try to remember to leave that link. Another thing that I came across was a movie that was actually a documentary that was made by Stephen Bannon. The guy who is supposed to be like the, you know, the chief strategist, the person who's like um, the big thinker, uh, you know, of the Trump administration, and and it's called uh, Generation Zero, and I'll try to put that link down below too. Not that anyone comes across my videos generally, but if anyone does, not many people see my videos. I don't know why that. YouTube or whomever would worry about whoever would worry about copyright because um, you know there's it's just silly I, I get, a lot of my videos get double digit views at the most some of them get more but a lot of them don't you know it just depends I guess and 
I haven't really had a breakaway moment with this channel. Anyway, it was interesting. There was some of it I agreed with. Uh, you know, like the fact that there used to be more of a social contract. And, and you can see that from the 50s, how things have changed. And how, um, yeah, more of a social contract with the workers. Which was hard fought. They don't bring that up in the movie. And they seem to sort of want to discount that. I didn't like the way that they portrayed people in the 60s who were idealists who wanted to change the world, but I understand their point of view. So within this documentary there were things that I agreed with and there are things I didn't agree with at all, but it was interesting nonetheless. Okay, thanks.